Hey everyone, in this video we're going to get an introduction to friction. Then we'll go into more detail in the next few videos. So what is friction? Friction is a force that we experience all the time, and it's acting on most objects even if we don't realize it. First, friction forces can act on an object that is not moving, and they can prevent it from moving. If you try pushing a box across a surface and it won't move, it's because the surface is exerting a friction force on the box. If an object is on an incline and it doesn't slide down, there must be a friction force keeping it at rest. And if you lean an object against a surface, there might be multiple friction forces preventing it from falling. Friction forces can also act on a moving object and cause it to slow down and stop moving. If an object is sliding or rolling across a surface, there's a friction force acting against its motion. If there are no other forces to keep it moving, the object will slow down and stop. We talked about that in the lesson on Newton's first law of motion. Moving objects don't stop on their own, there must be a net force causing them to slow down, and that force is usually friction. So what is a friction force? Two objects, or surfaces, can exert a friction force on each other when they are in contact, and we represent a friction force with lowercase f. So let's say there's a box sitting on the ground, and you try to pull the box to the right. The ground will exert a friction force on the box that points to the left. But we know that forces come in pairs from Newton's third law of motion, so the box will also exert an equal and opposite friction force on the ground to the right. We're usually only focused on the forces that are acting on one object, like the box, so let's just focus on the friction force acting on the box. A friction force acts where two objects or surfaces are in contact, so this friction force acts on the bottom of the box, where it's in contact with the ground. But we usually draw forces starting on the side of the object so they're easier to see. One important thing to remember is that a friction force acts parallel to the surface, in the direction that prevents or opposes motion. So this friction force is parallel to the ground, they're both horizontal. If the box doesn't move, we would say the friction points to the left because it's preventing the box from moving. Without that friction force, the box would move to the right, so the friction force must be acting to the left. If you pull harder on the box and you get it moving, then the box's motion is to the right, so we would say the friction force points to the left because it opposes the box's motion. The friction force on the box has the opposite direction as the velocity of the box. And if you stop pulling on the box, there's still a friction force from the ground while it's moving. And it still points to the left, in the opposite direction as the velocity. So, a friction force can act on a non-moving object, or a moving object, and its direction always prevents or opposes the object's motion. But what actually causes a friction force? How can the ground apply a sideways force on the box? Objects and surfaces might appear to be smooth, but if we zoom in, all surfaces have some amount of roughness. We can imagine there are a bunch of small bumps, little peaks and valleys, on the surface of each object. If you try pulling this box to the right, the bumps on the box will get stuck against the bumps on the ground. The ground exerts a bunch of small forces on the box to the left, and if we add them all together, we get the friction force on the box. The box also exerts equal and opposite forces on the ground, which add up to the friction force exerted on the ground by the box. If you pull hard enough to get the box to slide to the right, there is still a friction force on the box acting to the left as it rubs against the ground. So a friction force is caused by the microscopic roughness of each object or surface. But some surfaces are rougher than others, and the magnitude of the friction force depends on the materials and conditions of the two surfaces. So this ground might be pretty rough, but what if the box was sitting on something like ice? We're simplifying things a little, but ice is pretty smooth, and the bumps on the surface aren't as big. So there would be more friction between the box and the ground, and less friction between the box and the ice. If we slide the boxes with the same initial speed, 
the friction force from the ground is greater, so the box slows down sooner. The friction force from the ice is smaller, so the box travels farther before it stops. But describing surfaces as rough or smooth isn't very precise. We need a way to quantify how rough a surface is so we can calculate the friction forces. Luckily, there's something called the coefficient of friction. Each pair of surfaces has a coefficient of friction, represented with the Greek letter mu, that affects the magnitude of the friction force. Rougher surfaces have a greater coefficient of friction, and smoother surfaces have a smaller coefficient of friction. So for the box and the ground, the coefficient of friction might be 0.7, and for the box and the ice, it might be much smaller, like 0.1. The coefficient of friction is just a number, it doesn't have a unit. It's usually between 0 and 1, and a bigger number means there's more friction between the two surfaces. The last thing to mention in this video is the different types of friction. We're mostly just going to use static friction and kinetic friction, and we'll use the subscripts S and K to label each one. Static friction acts on an object when it is not sliding along a surface. So if you pull on this box to the right, but it doesn't move, then the ground must be exerting a static friction force on the box to the left. Or if this box is sitting on an incline, but it doesn't slide down, then the incline surface must be exerting a static friction force on the box that points in this direction. Remember, a friction force is always parallel to the surface that the object is in contact with, and this static friction force is preventing the box from sliding down. On the other hand, kinetic friction acts on an object when it is sliding along a surface. So if you get this box to slide to the right, then the ground is now exerting a kinetic friction force on the box not a static friction force. And if this box does slide down the incline, then the incline would be exerting a kinetic friction force on the box in the opposite direction as the velocity. Notice that we're specifically using the word sliding, not moving. This is important because some objects can also roll along a surface. If this wheel is rolling along the ground, like you'd expect, we call this rolling without slipping. It turns out that the point on the wheel that is touching the ground at any moment is not moving relative to the ground. So the friction force that acts on the wheel at that point is a static friction force. The wheel is moving, but it's not sliding. On the other hand, if the wheel was sliding across the ground, the friction force on the wheel would be kinetic friction. Don't worry if that's confusing, we'll cover it more in the other videos. But remember that static friction exists when the object is not sliding, and kinetic friction exists when the object is sliding, which is why kinetic friction is sometimes referred to as sliding friction. So the friction force on an object will either be static or kinetic. It won't be both at the same time. But as we'll learn in another video, the friction force can transition from static friction to kinetic friction. If you pull on this box but it doesn't move, the friction force is static friction. But if you pull hard enough, then the box will eventually start to move. At that moment, the friction force changes from static friction to kinetic friction. Each type of friction behaves in a slightly different way. And it turns out that there is a different coefficient of friction for each type even when the surfaces are the same. In the next few videos, we'll learn more about each type of friction and this transition from static friction to kinetic friction. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.